When you strip away distractions, you might come closer to the part of yourself calling out for more. Not more stuff, not more flashing lights, but more substance of the purest kind, the kind only God can provide. It's goodness, it's hope, it's love. Catholics believe we are continually journeying through our lives, as Pope Francis said, and the final and marvelous goal is reaching heaven. But sometimes that spiritual journey also becomes a literal journey, a pilgrimage. You know, you can show that act of devotion, that act of prayer, that act of consent of faith, of inviting Mary to help you, inviting Mary to walk with you, and having her son Jesus walk with you in your own home, in your own neighborhood. People make pilgrimages every day. Today we begin a series of episodes about a visit to the only place in the U.S. where the church has approved a Marian apparition. It's in Wisconsin, and it's in this episode of Faithful. Welcome to another episode of The Faithful Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Ganser, and this is the first episode I'm creating with audio and video both. So if you want to see some of what you're hearing about, if you're just listening to it, please check out our website or, of course, our YouTube channel. This episode is the first of three about the National Shrine of Our Lady of Good Help. It's in Champion, Wisconsin. And like I mentioned, this is the first and only church-approved Marian apparition site in the United States. Here's the story. In 1859, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to a Belgian immigrant, Adele Breeze. Mary identified herself as the Queen of Heaven who prays for the conversion of sinners and told Adele to teach children their catechism, how to make the sign of the cross, and how to approach the sacraments. And then Mary said, go and fear nothing, I will help you. Our next episode will go a little deeper into the apparition and the miracles at Champion, but today we are preparing for the pilgrimage, you could say. If you've not heard of Adele Breeze, you're in good company. I only recently learned about this a few years ago from a Jesuit priest, Father Carlos Esparza, who is also an economics professor that's not really relevant, but respect. Anyway, I met Father Carlos while visiting family at Georgetown University, where he told me about his visit to the National Shrine in Wisconsin, and also that he experienced something I thought was quite miraculous on its own. So it makes sense to me that we hear from Father Carlos to prepare for this pilgrimage to champion in the next episode, and maybe to find inspiration and some humor in his own experience. (laughs) So just name name an official title. Yeah. Hi, I'm Father Carlos Esparza, a Jesuit priest, and I am currently an assistant professor of economics at St. Louis University. Great. So why we're talking today is uh, because of the miracle at Champion, Wisconsin with Adele Breeze. And, and you said that you visited this site once before, uh, and it was a peaceful place. And you also experienced something um, pretty miraculous, I thought, in your uh, description of it. So I was just wondering if you could take us there, talk about your visit to the National Shrine. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So I uh, visited uh, the shrine in the summer, August of 2018. So uh, just a few years ago, and I was invited to go along with a group uh, from the Order of Malta who annually makes a pilgrimage there in the first or second week of August. And so one of the things that they want to do is build up the presence or the knowledge of that this place exists, that there is a Marian uh, shrine in the United States that has an approved apparition that's been one, the local bishop there has said it's uh, something worthy to believe. And also the United States Conference, uh, Conference of Catholic Bishops have said the same thing. So I joined, went, joined this pilgrimage of about 100 other pilgrims, uh, mostly mates, uh, excuse me, knights and dames of Malta. And, uh, but I was one of the priests that went along to kind of help be a chaplain to the group, uh, so to speak. And uh, 
while there, I think it was very interesting. So as you come into the place, it's kind of a very rural location, uh, as you might expect, uh, based on just the story of where this apparition took place. Not much has really has developed around there. So the shrine itself is a small chapel, and it's located between like <laughs> two other dairy farms. And so, you know, it's just kind of farm fields, you know, left and right as you go in. And as you pull in, at least this was three years ago, maybe there's been a little bit more involvement. But as you pull in, you know, um, I remember getting off the bus, and I was like, well, I was, you know, walking off the bus, going to the shrine, we're probably about maybe 50 yards away from the entrance. And I just take a big, you know, whiff of the place. And I go, wow, that smells really nice. Because what I had smelled was roses, some aromatic, mm -hmm. you know, this very, you know, fresh scent, sweet scent. Um, and of course, I had heard in the past, you know, from other uh, signs of Mary's presence in other places that sometimes uh, you can have a smell of roses. So I thought, oh, they must have some flowers or some vegetation nearby. And so we're kind of like in just dirt road where the, you know, the bus dropped us off. And I would send this to a, a fellow, uh, to a knight. And he goes, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can smell that cow manure from a lot of places because there's all these dairy farms. And I went, I go, no, I smell roses. And he looked at me kind of weird. He goes, oh, yeah, that's one of the signs here. So some people receive it, some people don't. So it was kind of like, well, okay, that was kind of an interesting place. Uh, interesting note for me. I was like, okay, well, uh, yeah, for me, that sense, like, yeah, Mary here is present. Uh, and so she's making herself really known to uh, many of us right away as we get off the bus. Um, and so, um, so you get off the bus, the chapel itself is very small. Uh, so there's an upper level and uh, a lower level. In the lower level, there is a statue of Our Lady of Good Help. And, you know, on the side of where uh, she appeared to Del Breeze. So you have this chapel there and you have a statue, and you pray there. And right away as you come in there's just a sense of peace um you know, i think that's like one of the gifts that our lady gives to us and that's what she's offering you know her son jesus says the same thing he promises us he's gonna be with us till the end of ages and he also promises his peace he goes peace be with you you know and so these are the things that we know from the resurrected christ and so mary is sharing that from her son and so i think that's one of the gifts that a lot of pilgrims get uh is peace while they're there uh, a sense of being able to recollect, a sense of having, a, um, uh, knowing that God is present to them and, and knowing that Our Lady is there very much uh, interceding for us through her son. Uh, and so that space itself on the lower chapel was very peaceful, uh, provided a lot of space uh, to pray. Uh, people pray rosaries, people pray the office, people pray their, their own petitionary prayer. He will come there to pray for healing because there's been miracles associated with this, with this, uh, with Our Lady, with healing at that specific shrine too. So mm -hmm. people with paralysis, people with illness, and so people come there for petitionary prayers, asking for that too. So I think the biggest gift is peace, and there's these other gifts too, or miraculous too, that offer healing uh, to uh, pilgrims that need help from Our Lady. Um, so that was probably the first part. The other thing I would say is um, the grounds are beautiful. There are the stations of the cross. Uh, so as this is between two dairy farms, so there's not much built up between them. So you have a lot of space to roam around, a lot of space to experience the Wisconsin nature. And uh, it's a very uh, serenic and uh, quiet place. And it allows you to kind of enter in that deeper, not just in the specific shrine building, the church and the chapel, but also on the grounds too, because it's a holy place. Um, the other thing I would say, so the kind of going back with the roses and smelling the roses. Uh, so that appeared when I first got there. And so I hadn't really, I didn't smell it since then, but um, it was a full day uh, visit that we had to the shrine. And so uh, it was, it was a 90 degrees humid day in Wisconsin. So a lot of people swaying all day, walking around. And so there were probably, at least a hundred of us. And so we had a mass in the chapel and after mass, then we came back and had a rosary and we prayed there. And again, this is a hundred people, you know, sweating all day. Uh, there's, you know, you smelling, you would, you know, from body odor and the sweat and whatnot. <laughs> um, and, but I remember as I was leaving, as I was leaving the doors, as I left the church, as I opened the doors to go outside, well, in the vestibule, the small vestibule, probably, you know, a 10 by 10 foot space, not much. All of a sudden, as I opened those doors, I did not smell any of the sweat. It was roses again. And so for me, it was very special because I think it was a way Mary say, you know, I am here as you start your day, but I'm also here with you as you leave. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
I mean, that was a special gift of the grace I received myself on my pilgrimage as, you know, a constant reminder of, again, the resurrected Jesus Christ says, I'm with you to the end of the ages. And Mary herself is saying, I am also with you because I'm leading you to my son. And so as I walked out there that day, um, I knew that I had the support of our mother, Mary, and going forward in uh, my own life and my own journey. And because I brought a lot of prayers there too for my own self, but also for a lot of people who asked for healing. And so from that, I got a great sense of peace, a great sense of going forward of knowing that I can return to Our Lady anytime I need to ask for help. That's beautiful, beautiful. I, I've been lucky that I've been able to travel quite a bit in my life, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if you've done many pilgrimages, um, but I wonder if you can talk about how important it is that there is a site like this in the United States, because I don't think a lot of people, or at least not as many as I would expect, know about it and know that there is a site like this and an amazing story like this right in our backyard, so to say, or right in our dairy farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been to, so I've done a few pilgrims myself. Um, I walked the Camino Ignaciano, which is a way of St. Ignatius Loyola in Spain, which, you know, so overlaps with probably a third of the, you know, the Camino of Santiago. Oh, yeah. uh, so I've walked that over two weeks. Um, so I've had pilgrimage there. I made pilgrimages to Rome, made pilgrimages to Jerusalem, I made pilgrimages to the shrine, Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. Uh, so I have that sense of it. And I think, uh, I think what's very important about this, you know, for our own faith is sometimes we feel like we have to go so far away to encounter God, especially on the pilgrimage. We want to do something grand. Um, and so for Wisconsin, you know, to have our shrine here in the United States, uh, it's much <laughs> more easily to get to, right? Right. And so, and the message that, I remember, that Mary gives to Adele is, first, I want you to help others be saved, salvation, and catechize. There's no big scheme. But the big thing she tells us is, I will help you. And I think that's what Mary wants to tell each and every one of us, that I am here for help. You, I can help. I can assist you. You come to me. I will lead you to my son, Jesus. And when you have Jesus with you, what else do you need? So I think it's important that we have a shrine here because, you know, we don't have to travel half the world to get to one of these places where wonderful things occur there, wonderful miraculous things happen there, but we have this in our own dairy farm, our own backyard. And so in a weird way, God is saying, I am present here too in North America. I am present here in the United States. I'm present here specifically in this rural area of Wisconsin. And so it's a reminder to all of us how truly blessed, how truly loved we are by our own God, that God allows these things, these wonderful, miraculous events to occur to let us know of his presence, to let us know of his mother's presence too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just a thought that I had that, you know, it what matters is that you are you are praying and you are showing devotion and reverence mm -hmm. and you don't have to go so far to do that because it all begins right here right yes no exactly um pilgrimages you know that's why i think wisconsin is great it's close by for a lot of people but even for those who don't <laughs> can't make it to wisconsin you know you can show that act of devotion the act of prayer the act of consent of faith of inviting Mary to help you, inviting Mary to walk with you, and having her son Jesus walk with you in your own home, in your own neighborhood. People make pilgrimages every day, you know, whether it's just visiting the local churches in their diocese, you're going to mass there on a different Sunday, or sometimes people make the walks, you know, if it's a downtown area and they can walk to two or three churches and say a little prayer at each church. So there's different ways you can do that pilgrimage. But the thing is, I think what the most important thing part of a pilgrimage is, is once you start, you're on a journey. And the pilgrimage is just not the destination of the church you go to. The, you know, the destination is our own life. Hopefully our destination leads us to heaven. And so that's, I think that's the idea is that we're on the way. All of us are on the way in our daily lives. And so how we do the pilgrimage, it reminds us of that. And so God can work at any moment, especially, you know, another, <laughs> tell you a little bit of story about my own experience. Uh, again, uh, I remember, wonderful experience I had in Wisconsin. And so the next day I'm flying back and I get off the airport uh, in Houston. And, you know, of course, I always, I was telling people, you had the, the pilgrimage continues when you're still traveling. It doesn't really end until you get back home. And so as I got to, to the airport in Houston, um, 
my suitcase, I, as I got off the, the plane, I'm in the gate and I'm just talking to a couple of other pilgrims. My suitcase fell over and knocked off a coffee on the chair of someone who was sitting there. And I felt horrible. Yeah. And I looked there and it was a mother of like two or three. And I'm like flustered, like, because I feel like I've done a horrible thing. I didn't pay for this. I need, I'm looking for napkins or anything. So I'm running off to find this, find these things. And I come back and she just says, it's okay. I go, I'm, no, I'm, no, she goes, it's okay. Things happen. And, and which is her voice was so calm and serene. It was oh. the same calmness and serenity I had at the film, at, at, at Champion. And so at that point I said, wow, it made me remind, remind myself how present God was in this moment, this mother taking care of her own children could put up with a priest dropping, not over her coffee. Um, <laughs> now I wasn't, I didn't even have my color on, so she didn't know it was a priest. She was just being generally nice, uh, not showing any extra sign of respect because, you know, I had a color on. Sure. But it made me realize this person herself is, ex- is exhibiting the holiness, exhibiting the kindness, the gentleness that our mother had that we're called to also do to others. So it was a very, it was a very wonderful moment. And so it was a very aha for me and kind of a very, in, a, in its own sense, a religious experience from it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's great. Um, well, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, uh, is there anything else you want to say uh, before I stop recording? I feel like we covered a lot of ground uh, here. Yeah. I th- yeah, I think the one thing, I, I think what's important for a pilgrimage is you bring yourself to the pilgrimage, pilgrimage, but you also bring others. And so I would just say for those who want to go to Champion, those who make these pilgrimages, whether it's walking in your own neighborhood, whether it's going to Champion, whether it's going to some other grand pilgrimage to Spain or Holy Land, but make sure you bring others. Bring others, their intentions, their thoughts, and lay them at the altar of Christ because Christ will help you. Christ will heal you because that's what he desires. And Mary leads us to Jesus. And she will also bring about that healing too, when we ask her. Thank you for checking out this episode of Faithful. The next one will be at the National Shrine in Champion, Wisconsin. We will hear more about the importance of a holy place like that, especially in times like these, plus the importance of the message given by the Blessed Virgin Mary. Across the world, not just the United States, but across the world, something that we were all awakened to was the weakness of our faith mm-hmm. you know you know the pandemic wipes you know go, spreads all across the world and uh what happens you know we we turn away from god in so many instances um, i think that that was an important realization for us uh, and making uh, our lady's message to adele all the more relevant teach the children how to approach the sacraments well that's going to mean approaching the sacraments with great faith, great belief, that I believe that these are the instruments of my salvation, and they're more important than anything that uh, I could go through or suffer or experience here on this earth. Please like and share this episode and check out our other episodes at faithfulpod.com or iTunes or plenty of other places. And please also... Have a great day.